let's do this. In the days of the Old West, cowboys lived by an unspoken code. The code of the West. Never try on another man's hat. Always remove your firearms at the table. Talk less, say more. Always do what has to be done. Some rules were easier to live by than others. For some, one was just downright impossible to abide. Never covet another man's horse. It is a rainy old Tuesday. Oh, kind of chilly. It's not horrible. Missouri's bipolar weather. Today is not fix it day. Today is fabricate it day. <laughs> ah! Stuff's falling off the dash. Oh my goodness. Got, you know, Monday and Tuesday this week got quite a bit of rain. I hope you guys got some seed on the ground before it all happened. Yesterday, we got this this spot in the front of our house that 20, 20 something years ago, about a year before we purchased the property, the city ran, they extended the city limits out past our house. Now our house wasn't annexed in we're still out in the county but they ran when they did this they ran water to a what at that time was a new subdivision out past our house in uh, in putting in that water line and trenching down through there they turned up a bunch of clay and several of the houses along through here where that water line was put in place we had difficulties growing grass and uh, as a matter of fact, my wife's cousin used to live about three or four houses up the road. And he had gone through the same thing that we've done for 20 years, seeding and reseeding and reseeding and, you know, doing, adding lime to it, all kinds of things, trying to get it to grow grass. And what he ended up doing was laying in, uh, I think it was two or three layers of sod uh you know when the sod the original layer of sod didn't make it he, the following year or whenever it was he just put another layer of sod over it now he's got grass down there and right here in front of my house there's no grass uh we grow our garden right out by the road but uh, out there where all that clay is I've used the disc plow, I've used the rock rake, I've, I've seeded it. As a matter of fact, I don't remember if it was last year or the year before, I had about three or four pounds of Bermuda seed left over from something. And uh, I scattered a bunch of Bermuda seed out along all of that. And we had a an unforecasted torrential downpour that evening and night uh, it was one of them freak rainstorms that just popped up out of nowhere and i believe we got like an inch and a half maybe two inches of rain in about four hours i mean it was a toad strangler and uh every bit of that seed that i put out there vanished <laughs> Well, you can look down the hill in the ditch and then over, there's a culvert that crosses underneath the highway and goes off into the Bertram's field. And you can look down through there and see all kinds of beautiful Bermuda growing now. Well, yesterday, um, I, I picked up a bag of, of lime at Hirsch. And while I was there, I got, um, I think it was about seven pounds of buckwheat seed, which is actually quite a bit. Buckwheat seed is a, it's a big seed, but it doesn't have a whole lot of weight to it, you know? So seven pounds of seed actually goes quite a ways. Now I was putting it on pretty thick 
But anyhow, I scattered some lime out in front, and then I put that buckwheat seed out there. And, and you guys are you're sitting there looking at the screen right now, going, "Why in the world is he seeding buckwheat in his front yard?" Well, the buckwheat no-till system. You know, first of all, I'm not going to try to sell anybody anything that I've not proven that works. And this is a good example. We've got some soil that, you know, on a scale of 1 to 10 doesn't even rate. Um, buckwheat seed, we're, we've got it scattered out there. If it takes root, <laughs> it does. That's a good thing. If it doesn't, oh well, you know, I'm out 15 bucks or whatever it cost me for the lime and the seed. But um, once that buckwheat grows to about two and a half, three foot before it goes to seed, I'm going to take the cultipacker and run down through there and, and fold that all over. But before I do it, I'm going to buckwheat seed it again. And, and then I'm going to run that culture packer through there and, and hit it with some glyphosate and kill that existing growth. And then for the rest of the year, at least until it goes, you know, gets ready to go to seed the second go around, I'll have buckwheat out there again. And my neighbors are going to drive by and they're going to be like, oh my gosh, what is that crazy man doing? But anyhow, in doing so and doing it several times, I should be able to build up some nice black palatable soil on top of that red clay to where I can put my Bermuda in the way that I want. Now, speaking of the cultipacker, it came in, let's see, on Saturday and I believe it was Sunday. I, you know, it comes in, in in three different boxes that all weighs about 110 pounds. Now I got the three point set up to go on the back of the tractor they offer one that's a pull behind it's a little bit less expensive and you know hindsight being or hind thought being being 2018 um, i probably could have got away with getting the pull behind because i'm gonna have to have it modified anyhow in uh yeah, it's in the back of the truck. We're going to take it up. Keith Wallace is an avid uh, follower of these videos and some of the other things that we got going on. And him and his wife own, I think it's called WW or W&W &W Trailers or something like that. You know how I am with names. <laughs> I've sold firewood to him in the past. I know where it's at, but I don't remember what the name of the business is. But anyhow, yesterday he came by and we discussed a plan that I got. You know, I'm trying to get this seeding, rolling, and spraying down to a single pass, okay? And it's not just because I'm lazy. We all know that I am lazy. But because I do this kind of work for other people, the less time, the more that I can accomplish out in the field, each time I'm out there, the less time I'm spending in the field, the better rates that I can offer to the, the people that have me come out and do their work. Okay, so the other day while my tractor was up at Hearst, we put a Reese type hitch receiver on the bucket of the tractor and we've got an electric sprayer that goes up in, or a spreader that goes up into the front and uh, that way we'll be, We'll, uh, using a front mounted seeder broadcaster we'll be broadcasting our seed out in front of the tires now as you know when you've got tall specifically tall standing grass we're not talking about your lawn you know where you've only got about you know four inches of growth that's going to lay down and then stand back up but when you've got tall stemmy grass um, you know with the the stalks as you drive over the top of it, it folds that down and your tire tracks, if you've got your broadcast spreader on the back of the tractor or whatever it is that you're using, the seed can't get down inside of that, that folded over grass. So we've moved the seeder out to the front and then on the back of it, and this is what Keith and his crew is going to be doing for me up there at the, at the trailer shop, is they're going to take the cultipacker 
in the, the three-point sprayer and combine the two somehow. He's got it all worked out in his head, I think. I don't know. Um, and that way, we're broadcasting seed out in the front. And then we've got the cultipacker rolling on the ground, folding all of the grass, all the stems over and breaking those. It's four feet wide, mine is, and you can get them at different, different widths. But uh, I chose four foot because sometimes when people call me out to do stuff in their feed plots and things, you've got to go down a narrow walking trail to get in there. So a 12 foot wide plow ain't gonna get you in there. But anyhow, now the cultipacker is going to fold all the stems over and break those, terminating that crop. And then with the sprayer mounted above with the nozzle behind it, now we're going to be spraying uh, glyphosate on top of these broken stems so that that previous growth that we just terminated, here's your seeds down in here on the soil, it's folded over the top of it, creating like a greenhouse effect and protecting that seed from the heat of the sun, uh, holding moisture in. And as time goes by, you keep doing this over and over and over again. And this duff down in the bottom, as it decays, it becomes natural organic topsoil. And eventually using this process, I think we can probably get away from chemicals 100%. Now this isn't something that you're going to do overnight. It's not going to happen in one season, but I'm trying to, to design all of my equipment to be functional and, and efficient to where I can do everything in a single pass twice a year. And then I don't have to charge absorbent amounts to the clients that have us come out and do things. Because if I got to come out three different times moving equipment out there. It's a hundred dollar minimum just to move the tractor. Okay. Well, if I got to do it three times, that's $300 minimum. Uh, I don't want to be that guy. I want to be out there, get the job done most efficiently as I can and save you the consumer as much money as I possibly can and build wildlife habitat and give you the best opportunity at that big buck when season comes around well it is design it day <laughs> i think i said fabricated day earlier but it's design it day i've spent the entire morning up at i think it's w and w trailers i'm horrible with names spent the entire morning up there with keith and and uh, it, it, one of his hired hands, Nacio, he was in there working on something. But we got the, he picked up the sprayer yesterday when we come by the house. And we got the cultipacker up there to him this morning. Lifted it out of the back of the truck with the, with the forklift. And uh, we stood there and scratched our heads and, kicked the tires, and walked around it, couldn't find a tape measure, then we had two tape measures, got some sticks of wood, got to figuring. Yeah, that's, that's one of the things that that I really enjoy is, is planning and, and figuring things out. I love to figure things out. When I was 17 years old, getting ready to join the Army, my mom said something to me. She says, now that your official education is over, it doesn't mean you have to stop learning. Now I'm here to tell you, to that 17 year old boy, it didn't mean a thing. I was 17 years old, I already knew everything I was ever gonna need to know. And I could do, I was almost bulletproof at that point. It took a couple months for me to become bulletproof believe that I was bulletproof <laughs> I found out later I wasn't bulletproof but uh, that didn't mean much to that 17 year old kid but now you know it, it, I don't remember what year it all kind of started clicking I think when the internet became available and, and that vast plethora of knowledge that's out there I love to research things and 
you and learn new things and, and like putting this cultipacker on the back of the sprayer most people would look at that and, and go why why and you know for the last oh four or five years something like that you know ever since we've had that little Mahindra tractor that I could easily move from one location to the next we've gone out and we've cleaned up people's pastures and mowed their fields and and you know done some feed plots and stuff like that and and we did it the old school way of thinking mow the grass plow or till uh spread your seed do this in september and you're going to have deer to hunt in october okay well there's there's probably nothing wrong with that but i'm finding with you know the assistance of of other people and people that lo know a lot more about things than i do specifically grant woods out in you know, he's over by branson missouri he, he's a i think a wildlife biologist or something like that and he has built the neatest place and uses a system very similar to the system that i'm not developing i'm i'm develop i'm I'm realigning my system to fit his system. And this is the reason why I want to put the roller on the bottom of the sprayer. That way, and I was just explaining this to Keith right before I left, instead of going out into somebody's field that's just covered up with sage grass and, and buck brush and, and whatever else, whatever else trash is out there, Instead of going out there and spending, you know, depending on the size of it, a day, two days, a month, mowing it and getting it down to the fresh growth to where the deer can actually get to what they're eating, instead of doing all that work and then having to come back along and till or plow uh, or cultivate and, and then go through and, and seed, you know, that's three trips around the field. Okay, so... We've already put the hitch receiver on the bucket of the tractor. The, the electric seed broadcaster that we have uh, is gonna mount out front, okay? So I'm spreading seed out in front of the tractor. Now, the first question a lot of you are gonna ask, how are you gonna keep it out of your radiator? Well, we'll have to work that out when we get there, but I can tell you that this, this seed broadcaster has got a bar on it, a piece of square tubing that's about two and a half, three feet long. It might be longer than that. So it's going to be way out in front of me. And, you know, all we got to do if we need to is make some type of little sheet metal shield that makes sure that all the seed goes forward instead of coming back towards the bucket. All right, that's happening out on the front of the tractor. It's out in front of the tires. So as we're driving through, whatever it is that we're driving through, it's before it gets folded down in them tire tracks. That way the seed actually gets down and makes contact with the ground. Now, my tractor, we're gonna say it's seven foot from there to the, to the roller. It might be further than that. It might be closer to 10 or 12 foot. It all fits on a 17 foot tractor uh, pretty nicely, or a 17 foot trailer pretty nicely if you don't have the bush hog on it you know so it's probably 14 foot long okay so call it 14 foot 14 feet later is going to be the packer max cultipacker which at this point it's rolling a four foot wide path and it's folding all that foliage down over the tops of each other because as it gets to the next piece it just kind of does this all right with that seed down here underneath it now that laying together now here's the big difference in the question that keith asked what's the difference between doing that and bush hogging okay well i don't know about your bush hog but my my rotary cutter it's five feet wide it leaves a strip of grass on the right side of the exit the very back of it that if i'm just cutting grass i've got my sharp blades on and you could come back behind me with the square baler and you could bail right behind my bush hog because it's got it all rowed up 
on on to the right side of the bush on okay now make several laps and you've got lanes strips of grass all clumped up laying there and that's too thick it's much thicker than than it just being folded over and crimped and that's going to be so thick it's going to choke out whatever is underneath it all right now the areas where that is not laying on the ground it has nothing to protect it so you might as well just go out and scatter seed out on the top of of your your field and and that works but what works better is when it's got this greenhouse effect down here underneath all of that that will soon become compost last year's growth is creating this this layer that protects that seed the rain will go right on down through it it creates that that canopy over the top of it that helps hold that moisture down there with all of that seed and it blocks all of the hot uv sun rays from getting down there and drying all that out and getting too hot all right now behind the roller is the nozzle for my sprayer and let's say i'm i'm spreading you know pick your soybeans roundup ready soybeans all right the cell beans are on the ground it's got the canopy over the top of it it's crimped over from the cultipacker which is going to break the stems and then we're going to spray the glyphosate over the top of it and that's going to soak in and, and it's going to terminate that crop once that crop is terminated, it's going to start decaying and later it becomes compost. And then again, another year it's death, duff. And then another year or two down the road, it's already broken down and it's soil that's building up on top of, of all of the old soil. Okay. Now each new layer of soil is going to get darker and richer and full of more full of nutrients. All right. Now the biggest difference between doing this, and going out and mowing and plowing or disking or cultivating and seeding now we've broken the soil it's exposed to the sun it's going to dry out a big windstorm comes how many times have you seen a windstorm blow across the field that's just been plowed and the dust is up in the air the dirt's blowing around that's called wind erosion or you've seen a field that's been plowed or tilled or whatever and a rainstorm comes up and then you got all these little troughs through there where it's where the water has eroded it down. We're going to stop doing all that and exposing all those rocks and we're going to start building up a renewable resource to continue feeding the nutrients back to the soil and creating nutrients for the wildlife to eat that's the reason why i'm putting the roller on the bottom of the sprayer and the seed broadcaster on the front of the tractor one trip and instead of breaking the soil down we're going to be building the soil up this is, brave. This is bruised this is who i'm meant to be this is me look out because here i come